let's catch up with a very hot topic in current astronomy, the Green Comet. The official name of this comet is Comet C2022E3 or Comet ZTF, named after the observatory responsible for its discovery, the Tsviki Transient Facility, which is described as a wide-field sky astronomical survey which uses a new, extremely wide-field camera attached to the existing 48-inch Samuel Ocean Telescope at Palomar Observatory in San Diego, California. Shown here is a widescreen image of the various telescope domes that make up Palomar Observatory. And the structure on the very left houses the 48-inch Samuel Ocean Telescope and, along with it, the Tsviki Transient Facility, which is designed to observe transient objects, or objects whose apparent brightnesses are expected to change over time. In addition to observing transient objects, the ZTF also observes moving objects, like asteroids or comets, when they come by. The facility itself is named after Fritz Vicky, a 20th century Swiss astronomer who was known for, among his many accomplishments, being the first to suggest the existence of dark matter as early as 1933. But let's switch gears and turn our attention from what would be a history lesson to something more focused on the comet itself, since you're probably here to learn more about the comet than the history of its discoverers. But what makes this comet so special and unique? First of all, its color. Green is a rare color for astronomical objects, but in the case of comets, the green hue is due to the presence of diatomic carbon. A typical molecule of diatomic carbon usually emits infrared light, meaning it's invisible to human eyes, but a specific form of it, its triplet state, radiates light at 518 nanometers, giving it the green color that we see. Now compare for a moment the structure of the comet in this image to how it appears here. Notice that the bright white plume has changed positions between the two images, which were taken about two weeks apart? Why is that? And what is a comet anyway? We would need to know more about comets in general to understand why they look the way they do. Comets, according to NASA's Space Place, are large objects made of dust and ice that orbit the sun. Best known for their long, streaming tails, these ancient objects are leftovers from the formation of the solar system 4.6 billion years ago. NASA's Solar System Exploration Portal defines them as the frozen leftovers from the formation of the solar system, composed of dust, rock, and ices, ranging from a few miles to tens of miles wide, and spewing gases and dust into a glowing head called a coma as they heat up after orbiting closer to the sun. The large amounts of ice and dust found in comets is why we like to sometimes call them the dirty snowballs of the solar system. Now, comets are very well known for their extremely eccentric orbits, which, when compared to the practically circular orbits of the planets, are quite stretched out and oval-shaped. These extreme orbital shapes result in comets being rare visitors to our part of the solar system, as it may take thousands of years for some comets to complete their orbits around the Sun just once. Some well-known comets include Halley's Comet, which is famous for its return to our skies every 75 years, or Comet McNaught, a famously magnificent comet that arced across the sky when it visited our part of the solar system back in 2007, most likely never to be seen again, as its orbit is so eccentric that it's practically a thin line rather than a circle, causing it to get slingshot back to the outskirts of our solar system after grazing past the sun. We even have Comet 67P, which is known as Comet churyumov gerasimenko and it laps around the sun about every seven years and that makes it a very frequent visitor. And last but not least, Comet Neowise, whose spectacular two-pronged tail carries us into the next topic about the anatomy of comets, and understanding why some of them have more pronounced tails while others don't. Here we can see the straight gas or ion tail paired with the signature curved dust tail of comets. Now, the reason comets look the way they do and sometimes change the way they look is due to their orbit. Comets generally originate from the furthest points of our solar system, with some originating from a region called the Kuiper Belt and others from the Oort Cloud. When they come near the Sun, the ice is locked within the comet's nucleus warm up from the Sun's incredible heat, creating a hazy coma around the nucleus. These ices sublimate as the comet gets warmer, creating a plume of gas and ions that is pushed away from the comet's nucleus by the solar wind. This causes the gas ion tail to point directly away from the sun at any given point in the comet's orbit. 
On the other hand, the curved dust tail, which is created as more of the heavy elements and chemical compounds are loosened by the diminishing ices, stretches along the path of the comet, giving us a sense of how it moves around the sun. Now, since all comets are known to be visible to us for only a given period of time, how much longer can we expect to see the green comet in our skies? It's been visible for some time now, but where is it in the sky? And where will it be a few days or weeks or even months from now? Up to this point, the green comet's trajectory has brought it through the part of the sky near the North Celestial Pole, where the star Polaris can be found at the tip of the Ursa Minor asterism, which sits opposite to the Big Dipper asterism in the constellation Ursa Major. At the start of the month of February, the comet was at its closest distance to the Earth, and at its peak brightness with an apparent magnitude of 5. Keep in mind, however, that this is very near the stargazing limit of the naked eye, since the dimmest celestial objects that we can comfortably see in the sky without a set of binoculars or telescopes is an object of magnitude 6. The brighter the object, the smaller the magnitude value, sometimes resulting in negative magnitudes too. This means that seeing the green comet from the city center would be a practically impossible task, considering that objects beyond magnitude 2 are generally washed out by light pollution. So if you want to try and catch the green comet before it leaves our skies, your best bet would be to go far away from the city and the city lights towards a location where a dark night sky is somewhat guaranteed. This is usually a place like the desert or high up in the mountains, as long as the conditions are safe for you to visit these locations and you have the right equipment to stay safe and warm during your stargazing adventures. According to the Starwalk app and website, on the night of February 8-9, to 9, the comet can be seen about one degree away from the star Hasale, which is a bright star in the constellation Auriga, with a magnitude of 2.7. Just a few days prior, it was seen near the star Capella, the brightest of the stars in Auriga, with its magnitude of 0.1. From February 10th through the 12th, the comet can be detected very close to the apparent position of the planet Mars, which can be seen as the bright red dot of magnitude zero in the constellation Taurus at this time. One way to determine whether you're looking at a star or a planet is to see if the object you're looking at is twinkling. If it is, it's a star. If it's not, it's a planet. Later in the month, on the night from February 14 to 15, the comet will pass about a degree and a half away from the star Aldebaran, which is one of the more prominent stars in the Hyades star cluster in the constellation Taurus. After that, the comet will continue traveling further south along the sky, appearing to the right of the constellation Orion, before it ventures into Eridanus in the month of March. At this point, the comet's brightness is expected to have dropped to a magnitude of 8, deeming it practically invisible to the naked eye. Now, the magnitude of comet ZTF will only continue to diminish as time passes. By April, it will be in the part of the sky near the sun and extremely faint, becoming altogether too difficult to locate visually, even with stronger telescopes. So, while we have the chance, it's worth trying to catch a glimpse of the green comet before it disappears from view entirely, only to return about 50,000 years from now if it returns at all. <laughs>